YouTube. Trevor here, Summit on Nothing. Today I'm out on a bit of a different adventure. I'm in Exeter doing the city walled walk. So built by the Romans, repaired by the Saxons, but the Exeter city wall still survives. 70% of it still survives. But you might walk around Exeter and never notice it. So hopefully this walk will highlight whereabouts it is and talk us through some of the history. So the wall starts just off of the High Street on Castle Street. So around the trail there'll be these signboards that we've got to look for. So that's number one on Castle Street. The city of Exeter has almost 2,000 years of history and during this time its wall has saved the city on more than one occasion. As well as being a defensive structure, the wall has been the backdrop to ceremonies and punishments. You can see how it's been adapted over the years. It's like built on the top of it, built off of it. Anyway, we're going up now, Northern Hay Place. Okay, so now we're up in Northern Hay Gardens. It's a nice little area, statues around for us to look at. And of course, the wall going right the way along. The little gatehouse or something up there. So now we've just got to look out for the signboard. The first major settlement of Exeter was by the Roman 2nd Augustian Legion in 55 AD. A stone wall protected this strategically important position. After the departure of the Romans, the city was virtually abandoned, but life was re-established in Saxon times. Here you can clearly see the various types of stone that were used at different times. the Norman Gatehouse. Although not strictly part of the wall, the castle was an important part of the city's defences. Built in 1068, following the Norman siege of Exeter, it established a foothold of control for the Normans over the previously rebellious citizens of Exeter. The Gatehouse is the oldest standing castle building in Britain. Devon witches, the last people in England to be executed for witchcraft, tried here and hanged at Heavy Tree. On leaving the Norman Gatehouse, walk back through Rougemont Gardens into Northern Hay Gardens. Turn left and cross Queen Street onto Northern Hay Street. That's where we are now. After 50 metres, turn into Maddox Road. Maddox Road. At the end of Maddox Road, turn right into Paul Street. Proceed to the traffic lights at the south end of Iron Bridge. You are now at the site of North Gate. This was the site of one of the smallest of the city's four main gates. It was burnt down during the Perkin Warbeck Rebellion of 1497 and also damaged during the Prayer Book Rebellion of 1549. Today, a flagpole with a wyvern weather vane originally from the gate marks the point where the gate once stood. Here, look, that's the, uh, the weather vane. So not the most attractive area, quite busy by road and you can't really see the existing wall here or the gate, though there is a pub. Anyway, let's carry on. Okay, from the north gate we've walked down Bartholomew East Street, now we're walking down Bartholomew Terrace. On the 
the corner of Bartholomew Terrace once stood a large semicircular tower that dominated the defences to the west of the city. It offered an excellent observation point for the many sieges, particularly during the English Civil War. So I take it it was somewhere between this wall here and this wall here. Anyway, let's carry on. Right, well, there's the uh, signboard. It's no good. I'll try and find some information on that and do it some other way. Westgate. This gate was the main entrance to the city from Plymouth and Cornwall and was a particularly busy place at the height of the woolen cloth trade. Site of the West Gate, successfully defended against the rebel attacks in 1549, William Prince of Orange with his army entered the city in 1688 through this gate which was removed in 1815. Another interesting fact is this, the house that moved, but this was actually further up the road somewhere, I can't remember the exact location, but they did actually move it, place it here some point in history. Interesting. Anyway, I'm just going to pop over there. There's some ruins over there I was going to go and have a look at, see what that is. Okay, so now I'm going to walk to Lower Coombe Street proceed on to Cobble Key Hill and at the bottom you will be at Watergate you might have a plaque all about Nixon Watergate. This gate was added to the city wall circuit for commercial rather than defensive reasons. During the 16th and 17th centuries, this area was involved in the woolen cloth industry, be it finishing the cloth on X Isle or exporting the cloth from the quay. Never seen this area, I've been to Exit so many times, never knew this was down here. Continue on the footpath up the hill to Western Way. From here, either cross Western Way via the Yar Sullivan Bridge or to your right over the pedestrian crossing. The next board is located on the other side of South Street. The site of South Gate. King Henry VI entered the city here 16th July 1452. For centuries, a prison demolished 1819. Southgate. This was the most impressive of all the city gates. This stretch of wall was very vulnerable from attack so a number of smaller towers were built. Final stretch of the walk. The walk. You can see we're in like a built-up area, all the new shopping precinct, and then this old wall that you walk past. Here we are, number nine, the East Gate. Being the principal entry point to the city, this gate played a vital defensive role during the many sieges of Exeter especially during the Perkin Warbeck Rebellion. So here we are at the final bit of the wall, but yep, that's the end. So I hope you enjoyed that, quite interesting. But if you did like that, I'll we'll do more of that sort of thing every now and again. Just gets me out for a couple of hours. Something to do, isn't it? Anyway, so that was Exeter City Wall Walk. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you all soon. Peace.